Let's forbid to smear even part of the person's body on him kipper, just like his entire body. We'll go to the the Pirush. Bain Sirosh al Tainik, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a smearing for enjoyment or Bain Sirosh Ainish al Tainik, or it's done for another reason, as we'll see, even to cleanse oneself. Find this in Yerushalmi, that any uh, a smearing is forbidden, whether it's for enjoyment or not. If he was sick, even though Avabishain Boisakona, even though he does not have a danger, or he has cuts in his head, he's still permitted to anoint himself, you know, to Yom Kippur. It's a price in Yuma 77a. Regarding Tishabov, where we also find the five categories of things which are forbidden, eating, drinking, anointing, etc. The Rambam there, in Hilchus Tainus, writes that, that anointing, that it is not beneficial, to take off the uh, dirt, etc., um, is is forbidden. The Rebbe Mishnah says the reason of the Rambam is because he makes similar the din of Tisha B'av to the din of mourning. By an oval we find in Tainus that oval is also to wash his body, but to anoint himself even a little bit. In other words, the body, the entire body, but parts you can wash, but to anoint even a little bit is forbidden. And if it's to take off dirt, it's permitted. Still, the Lachamisha says the Ramam there made similar tissue above to Yom Kippur. And he writes it, it's, it's forbidden to the Sikha of Tainig and Yom, like Yom Kippur. And here he writes that if it's not for Tainig, it's forbidden on Yom Kippur. And he doesn't mention if, if it's for Tainig, for benefit. He says even if it's not for benefit, it's forbidden. So why does he say only there if it's for benefit? The concept of a smearing that is not for benefit is found in the Torah in 6.14 that if he, he smears himself to take off dirt that's forbidden even though to wash oneself to take off dirt is permitted as we, as we learned earlier therefore by smearing they forbade of even when he's going to remove the dirt or the sweat so we find in the Shulchan in the Shulchan Aruch it's forbidden to smear oneself even a little bit of the body, even if it's only for the purpose of removing dirt. Even if it's not for enjoyment, it's forbidden. But washing to take off dirt is permitted. So the question is why Yom Kippur can you wash to take off dirt and you cannot smear yourself to take off dirt even though it's not for benefit. So Yom says because people usually wash dirt off. They don't smear dirt off with oil. And it's self-evident. Whereas when you when you put oil on your hands, you're not sure what you're doing it for. And even though you you know that you're doing it for taking off the dirt, it's not evident, and therefore um, it's forbidden. Let's see what the B.R. Gros says. The Divrei Yecheskel writes that even the Ramam, according to the Ramam, there's a difference between whether it's for benefit or not. Even though they're both forbidden. Meaning, if it's for enjoyment, it's forbidden minatera, because that's forbidden minatera. But if it's not for enjoyment, it's only forbidden mirabona. Therefore, the Ram writes here that if a person was sick, even though there's no sakona, such as he has his cracked skin in his skull, he may use oil, and he doesn't have to be concerned. But if sicha, which was not from benefit, would be forbidden from the Torah, then they wouldn't be able to permit a, a, a person who's sick and not in danger of his life to smear himself. Thus we can say that what the Ram writes in Hukas Tainus, that Tisha B'av is forbidden only for benefit like Yom Kippur, he means that in Tisha B'av it's forbidden uh, enjoyment, just the same as it's forbidden in Torah by Yom Kippur, and therefore there's never a time when it's permitted if it's for enjoyment. Regarding uh, smearing oneself, part of the body is just as forbidden as the entire body. By washing, it's not the same. The Ram wrote how you can't even wash a 
a finger, a small finger. The question the Rishonim ask is that according to those who have the opinion that all five uh, for things that are forbidden on Yom Kippur are based are Torah based. How do they permit a king and a bride to wash their faces, a bride within 30 days of her marriage? And Jesus, Yishonim, at the beginning of Perak Yom Kippurim, writes that even those who say that all five are in Torah, that's only when you do the entire body or you smear the entire body. But if you do only partially or smear partially, it's not forbidden only with Rabbanan. Therefore, the Rachomim, to begin with, never forbade a king and a bride. And see the hammock she'ela who discusses if all five are minatayr or not. Now we come to the last halacha in chapter three. The Rambam says Yesh Mekayim Yishanog Ladek is an able Eliyahu Mekipulim. There were places that did light the candle on the night of Yom Kippur, and the Purush goes on like you do it at Rosh Hashanah or Yom Tov. Kedeshi Eloi Boishes Ponem Yishtoi. Why don't that, and the reason they do it is so that he, his face will be illuminated, so his wife will be able to show her dissatisfaction with what he's doing. He'll be ashamed. He will not come to marital relationships. There are places that specifically for that reason did not like, lest he see his wife, and she'll find favor in his eyes. And they'll come to having relationship. Now this is found in Psochim 53b. There the Mishnah continues that you light in both Ignatius you add light because the idea and now it's understood even though the Ram didn't bring it and the Mishnah says it's self-evident again because the Ram says the reason is only he shouldn't come to marital relationships and that cannot happen outside of the house and therefore in the streets and uh, and the biskneses where they need light for the holiday, there where people are davening, there one is permitted to add light and in fact should add light. And if you keep having to be on Shabbos for sure, you have to light because Shabbos is a choyv as we learned in Hilchos Shabbos. Lighting candles on Shabbos is not something you do if you want to, but rather you. It's a commandment that uh, is not obligatory if you have no candles, but you still have, it's an obligation. The Ram would seem to say that when you make the brocha on, on, the, on the light of Shabbos, so too you make a brocha on Yom Kippur that falls on Shabbos, since it's an obligation. Regarding Yom Kippur, that happens during the weekdays, the Rams brings mentions two customs. Uh, some do make a bracha on Yom Kippur, some don't. Rabbeinu Meleach says, how would a new place which doesn't have a custom, how should they act? Because if it's a custom of the place, then you do that. Is one more correct than the other? Yerushalmi Yom Sochem brings down that they really lit is more praiseworthy, more so than a place that does not light. And therefore, if it's a new place, they should light. And those places that lit uh, light on Yom Kippur, the Shulchan Aruch writes that there, he mentions both opinions, that there are those who say you make a brocha, and meaning there are those who say you don't. And Ramo writes that that's the Minig and Ashkenaz, but the Mishnah will write that if, this is, if there's no set Minig, you should definitely establish a minig not to bro- make a brocha because there's no purpose in it at home. You're not eating, and you're not having uh, uh, any, you don't have to be with your wife on Yom Kippur. The income on is, and this, our intent in the safer is not to decide the aloha. Slik Hill is also. Slik Hill is also. And Mir Tashemi will continue in the next year with Agoris Maimonis.